It's a minute. Or it's almost. It's almost nine. We'll, we'll get just get started. <laughs> Everybody. Good morning. Um, my name is Jeff Bull. I'm one of the managers of developer advocacy uh, with Cisco DevNet, um, which means that I lead one of the two teams of actually a lot of the content creators you've probably seen um, in, the, in the workshops and the sessions, building the content that you work with on developer.cisco.com. Um, and stay three, right? Stay three. Yeah, stay three. <laughs> These days are kind of blending together. Um, Day three, so we're not going to get like super technical first thing in the morning. Just kind of, we'll kind of ease into it. This is one of my <clears throat> sort of passion topics. I love, I love giving this presentation um, for a number of reasons. Primarily because it's kind of therapy for me because I'm using this as a way to like remind myself that I need to do what I'm about to talk to all of you about. Um, we're going to talk about this idea of a work-life rhythm, which I'll get into it in a second. But to start off, Everyone, has everyone here heard that we've all talked about the idea or heard the idea of a work-life balance, right? That's a pretty, okay. So the phrase work-life rhythm kind of takes a different angle on that, which is what we're going to spend our time talking about today. Okay, that's me. You can find me on all the socials at Jeff Bull Tech. A um, little bit different on TikTok if you like being there. TikTok for me is just all Star Wars stuff because that's all I do. Star Wars cosplay, Star Wars gifts, Star Wars memes, that's all I do. A little bit about what we're going to go through today. I already said it, but we're just going to go through a few different <clears throat> kind of stories I like to tell about this and some tips for how to actually do this for yourself, and hopefully it'll be helpful for all of you. All right. So I mentioned the work-life balance. We've all heard that. And I, the way that I tend to think of this is, in my mind, and I'm, I don't know if it's the same for all of you, this is what I tend to think of when I hear the, the term work-life balance. Somehow this, this mythical space in our lives where like, we're standing there and like, work is over here and life is over here and it's always in this perfect harmony and feels great, right? Except that's not true. I, mean, I don't know if, show of hands, anybody ever found a way to actually have a balance between your work and your life? It, it, yeah, exactly. It's either no or sure, I think. There was that one time like four years ago on a Tuesday, I think. So that picture basically is this space that everyone uh, talks about all the time with balance between all our hobbies and these activities we love to do and then the work that we do every single day. One of the reasons, though, I, I have this presentation and one of the reasons why I, I actually hate, I, I despise this word balance when it comes to work and life is how, much of, how many of us actually want to have a balance between work and life? The way, in a rhetorical question, the reason I'm saying it that way is wouldn't you rather spend more time living and doing the things you like doing in your actual life and the work is the thing that should enable you to do that stuff? I kind of feel like that's more of what we really would like to have, but most of us, I know for a fact I do, I tend to feel guilty when I feel that way. Like, well, no, 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 like, but I got to commit myself to my job, the thing that I do every day because that's what you're supposed to do, right? And the rest of the time you get to do some other stuff. But I think everybody would really rather like, I don't want to have to do as much of this so I can do more of my fun stuff, my life, the family time, social activities, whatever that happens to be. Sounds great, but yeah, okay. Where's my next picture? There you go. So a work-life rhythm. The reason I use this term rhythm, and I'm going to get to kind of a, an image in just a minute that will, I think, cover it a little bit better. But to me, a rhythm is a little bit different. It's, a, it's kind of a different perspective, a different mindset on how to look at your life, your work, and all the things that you do on a daily basis. Because the 50-50 split idea, I just mentioned, it doesn't exist. Like, we, nobody ever actually gets to this. It's 50% of this and 50% of this, and somehow that's just where we're going to stay. That's not a thing. Like, that doesn't happen. The idea of a rhythm, and actually I have a picture in a moment that will show it, but the idea of a rhythm to me is sort of a flow in all of the things that we do on any given day, on any given week. And it's a mindset shift to let us not think about the day-to-day -day things that we do, but what am I doing this week? What am I doing for the next two weeks? What am I doing this month? Like, how am I thinking about what I'm gonna do for the next month? And I don't mean get my notepad from in the back room there and write down, here's what I'm doing tomorrow, here's all the stuff I'm doing the next day, here's what I'm doing all of this. I don't mean that. I don't mean write down all of your tasks every day for the next two weeks. I do not mean that. What I mean is, what would you like to get done this week? What's something in your mind, just you can think, all think about this. What's something in your mind that in this next week, you just want to make sure that it is done for you? For me, well, it's going home after I'm done with Cisco Live. But next week, um, I love to sew. I actually picked up sewing three months ago. I went and bought a sewing machine because I just wanted to learn how to do it. And I wanted to make my first cosplay so I can go to, go to a, 
a uh, Comic Con and actually dress up in Star Wars stuff. Something I really want to do. So I bought a sewing machine so I could teach myself how to sew. That's what I want to do by the end of the next month. I want to have that kit completely ready so the next Comic Con coming up in San Francisco, the area that I live in, I can go to that. That's what I want to think about. That's where I want my brain focused on. Not what am I doing this next week? What are the tasks I've got? I, mean, I want to focus on that thing I want to get done in a month. And the reason why I like to think about it at a longer stretch is rhythm, the term rhythm, I think most of us probably associate with music. I, I, at least that's how I associate it. When you think of a rhythm, you think of a song, like whatever your favorite song is, you listen to it, it sounds good. It's a song you'll really enjoy listening to. But if you broke that apart to the various notes or the bars in a sheet of music, it wouldn't sound very good. It'd be very chaotic. Every individual note is like up or down or changes. But when you finish listening to it, the whole thing is a melodic tone. You enjoy it. Like it's, it's a piece of music. But it, like I said, each individual piece may look chaotic. Having more of a rhythm as a focus allows us both to be more productive at work, but we get to this word right here, respect. We get to respect more of our actual life. We get to respect more of the time that we want to spend on any given day, any given week, doing the things that makes us feel like an actual human being, whether that's hobbies, activities with our family and friends, mental health, because that's a huge deal and we're not, people I think don't talk about it nearly enough. But to me, this is what a rhythm this is how I visualize a rhythm. If you look at a sheet of music, any individual note, it's high, it's low, it's mixed, and on any one of these bars, it's gonna look super chaotic. If you only listened to that section of the song, it would sound really weird. If you picked like one three second piece of a song, it doesn't sound like a song, it just sounds like a sound bite, right? But if you look at and you listen to the entire thing, it makes sense. I like to think of our lives and the way that we plan our lives more like this. How do I plan out the entire sheet of music so I don't focus so much on what's happening today, what's happening tomorrow, is this sounding right? It's over the course of a month, does this all work to what I want to get to in a month? That's what I want to think about. The person I actually got this idea from, does anybody know who Adam Grant is? Does that name sound familiar at all, Adam Grant? Okay, he, um, he works at the University of Pennsylvania in the United States, uh, a place called the Wharton School. It's a, it's a business school. Um, he's written a number of books, uh, but one of them that I really love he did recently is called uh, Think Again. And it's the whole idea that we should be rethinking, allowing ourselves to rethink something that we hold sacred. Something that we, like, we just know, like, this is the way that I do X. This is the way that I do Y. This is how I engage with something. Allow yourself to rethink that, or a position you hold, like, I believe X to be true. His idea is, like, you don't have to change your mind. We don't need to change our minds, but we, it's good to give ourselves space to actually think again about something that we really like locked into work-life balance. We'll use that as the example here. That work-life balance is what I have to achieve. Well, is it? Like, is that the thing we want? So I got this concept from listening to one of his podcasts where he talked about, give yourself a chance to think again about that thing that you believe to be true. How do I get to the work-life balance? And so for me, it was, he gave the analogy of a sheet of music. And I really spent a lot of time thinking about that. Um, and it probably would sound odd to some people, but I love... I love heavy metal, specifically progressive metal. I absolutely adore it. Um, and for me, when I went back and started listening to songs, I realized, oh, they, they sound great, to me at least, on the whole. But again, especially with heavy metal, when you listen to any, any snippet, it probably sounds hyper chaotic and it doesn't make any sense at all. You're like, okay, that's terrible. But the whole song, at least to me, sounds amazing. And so this idea really resonated with me because I'm like, oh, okay, that actually makes a lot of sense. And when I sit down and say, I'm gonna plan out this week, here's all the tasks I'm gonna get done, I don't know about any of you, but that literally has never worked for me ever. Like for a day and a half, I feel really good. And then after that, all these things come through Asana and then I get emails and then my chat messages. And yeah, by the third day, all I'm doing is checking email and checking chat and responding to those things. I'm not actually doing, I go back to my notebook on Thursday. I'm like, oh, that's right. I was supposed to call the vet to get my cat in a, you know, a, a vet appointment earlier in the week or, or whatever the thing was. I'm like crap, like I should have just looked at my notes that were sitting right in front of me. Cause it just doesn't, it doesn't always work. Cause when you hyper-focus on the day-to-day -day and the thing right in front of you, it's really easy to miss the stuff that's coming in, and then you become very reactionary. You stop, you stop thinking, you're stepping back and saying, yeah, all this stuff is cool, but I'm still trying to just get this one thing done this week. There's one thing that's really important to me. So, I'll, let's make this a little interactive for a second, if you're all up for it. I know it's early-ish in the morning. I told, I told you a little bit about me. I didn't put the pictures up here because I didn't want to be like uh, violating any copyrights by having Star Wars things. George Lucas tends to get really upset about that stuff. But so I love Star Wars. I love tattoos. 
Um, I love these sorts of things. I don't know, if anyone's comfortable, throw something out that you love doing. Anything. If anybody wants to say words. What was that? Walking. Awesome. Walking. Anybody else? Mountain biking. Right on. Anyone else? Cool. Walking, mountain, mountain biking. Um, that's a th what I want you to sort of like, try to figure out the best way to say this. For me, I like to say, you want to go walking dur during the week, right? Or you want to go mountain biking every week. You want to find some space to do that. Like, I want to do this. I don't know about the two of you or anybody else here, but for me, the way that kind of manifests is I'm like, oh no, tomorrow I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go make sure I take a walk at 11 a.m. I'm going to do it. I'm going to get it from my desk. Um, I don't have a picture of it here, but I actually work in a shed in my backyard. So I, I live a little bit east of San Francisco in the Bay Area of California. Um, and when my wife and I moved there, I, we moved there specifically because I was, I was needing to commute into the Bay from where we lived. It was a long, long drive. And we're like, this is dumb. Let's move. We move. I build the shed. I'm like, so when I'm at home and I'm not in an office, I'll just work in this small shed in my backyard. I made it a whole video studio. It's, I love it. And then the pandemic hits like four months later. I'm like, okay, so now I'm just in the shed every single day all the day, which is a lot of fun when it's 108 degrees outside in the Bay Area or in, right now in the middle of winter, it's 42 degrees outside and I'm inside. Yeah, it's, it's a pain. Um, but what I tell myself every day is like, no, I need to get up and go take a walk. I, like 11 a.m., no, tomorrow, I have no meetings. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go get that walk. You can probably all guess how often that actually happens. Like how often I actually like, I'm good, everybody. I'm just going to lock my computer and just go, you know, right, open my shed doors and walk right to the backyard gate. And I'm just, I'm just going to go take a walk. going to go do it. You could probably all insert your own experience. Like, how often does that actually happen for you? Like, how often are you actually successful at doing that? If we just spend our time thinking about, I'm going to make that happen tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. I'm going to so associate my tasks and my work schedule around that. What we end up doing is we lose sight of, I want to get these things done over the course of a week. What we end up focusing on is this one task, and then we have to mitigate all the other things that are coming into us on a daily basis to try to make that one thing happen. And so kind of going back in my mind, or see if I try not to mess this up, going back to the sheet of music, we end up hyper-focusing on this. And then when this comes in, we're like, oh, okay, hold on, let me, go, let, me, let me address this and I'll come back to this. And then by the time you're three days in, you've forgotten that that's the thing that you wanted to actually do. And so the reason I bring up this visual is I think all of us need to be able to step back and put the sheet of music down and look at it, not at this level, I should have put a smaller picture here, not at this level, but step back where you're, the sheet of music's right here on the floor and I'm gonna step back and look at it and just listen to what it's actually, what is that music it's playing? Not the note in front of me. And so when I think about that for our time and our lives, that's your, that's your time. It's not a sheet of music, it's your life, it's a month. It's one month of your time. What do you want that to sound like when the month is over? What are the things you want to be able to look back and say, I feel good because I got these things accomplished for myself? That's where we have to get our mind. It's a mindset shift. There's, a, there's some other research done by um, a psychologist named Carol Dweck. She wrote actually the book called Mindset. It's all about the difference between growth mindset and fixed mindset. I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with those terms. But the idea that she put forth in her, in her, um, in her work is all, all about a growth mindset is being willing to understand that as people we can change. Like in our lives we can, we can be not just what we are right now, we can be something different. And a fixed mindset is, nope, I'm just good at this, but I can't be anything more, I'm just good at this one thing. So the idea here is, can we have a growth mindset to let ourselves think that I can do something different, I can approach this differently, I can think about this a little bit differently, I can think again about how I approach the way I schedule my life. So that hopefully we get to do more of these things, taking the walks, the mountain biking, Sewing, um, I use that as kind of a thing for me. What, I've, what I have noticed about sewing for me is that I keep my sewing machine in the garage and I have a whole, I, I have a workbench for all my woodworking stuff because I love to woodwork too. I have all my, my table saws and all that stuff in the garage too. Um, and then I also have a separate station, a station I set up for my sewing. We got the, the gym stuff, all that. I like going to the garage and sitting down and sew because what I realize is that I can't even really listen to music because it distracts me. When I'm sewing, kind of like, if anyone can think about it, working on a table saw and cutting wood, like, I can't really multitask if I'm working on a table saw. Like, that's probably a bad idea to do more, try to do too many things when I have a, you know, 30,000 RPM blade spinning in front of me, I'm cutting a piece of wood. I shouldn't probably be doing two things at the same time there. It's probably not smart. With sewing, not quite that dangerous, but what I found is it's a meditation. I have to focus on the thing that's right in front of me. I have to put something here, and I just have, I'm running, I'm running a stitch, and it focuses me, 
it makes me focus my brain on the one thing that's right in front of me, not the 10 other things I have to do. So it's become kind of a meditation for me. Walking can kind of be the same thing. Listening to book can be kind of the same thing where you're, I'm just going to focus on this one thing for a few minutes that we don't let ourselves do very frequently. You know, reading, gaming. I actually bought myself an Xbox. I've never had a console in my entire life. I bought myself an Xbox and put it in the shed and so I could play Jedi Fallen Order. I'm a huge nerd, sorry. So I could play Jedi Fallen Order because I've been seeing all my TikTok friends playing it. I'm like, no, no I, I need to play this game. So I bought it and I actually found myself at first feeling guilty. Like, I can't stop work and close my, you know, lock my screen and turn over to the screen here and play Xbox for a few minutes, right? And then I did it and I'm like, oh, there's no one here to check on me. My boss isn't pinging me saying, Jeff, are you playing your Xbox right now? Nobody, nobody cares. Like, my work's getting done. My boss is, you know, six states away from me. I'm here. She's two time zones away from me. She doesn't care what I'm doing. She's like, as long as you're getting the stuff done, you told me you're going to get done. And it's things like that that really resonated with me. It made me realize that, oh, I can actually do this. I can actually plan my life out over a course of a month. And as long as I'm getting the stuff done, I'm okay. Everyone's fine. The world's, I'm not saving lives in what I do. I mean, yes, this is a lot of fun and I love being here with all of you, but making PowerPoints is not the same as, you know, some critical life-saving thing. I'm just, I'm making a PowerPoint deck to talk to all of you. Okay. Talked a lot about the importance. I'll just, I'm going to build this out because we'll just get through this pretty quick. And I want to get to the actual like, tips and things like that too. I find that using this rhythm, and I kind of alluded to it, thinking about the rhythm and not the balance allows, ourselves, allows all of us to manage our time and energy better. Um, in specific, I mean how you plan every day because you're, you, you allow yourself to focus more on what do I want the end of this week to look like? What, what are the things I want to be able to, for me it's, I want to make sure that I got to the gym three times this week because I'm not great at it. And I, I want to make sure that I got to the gym and I feel better that I'm like, I'm eating properly or I ate, I ate every day because I'm not always good at that. Eat right every day and I got to the gym a few times. I want to make sure that's what I got done. So that's what I'm going to focus my brain. Did I get those things taken care of? But by doing that, it also lets me focus and I think it lets everyone focus on what things do I need to do in my work schedule how do I need to arrange my work schedule so that I can get these things done? And now, I don't know about, I don't know about in um, this part of the world, but for us, we're still mostly remote. Like, I'm, I'm, other than going to our main campus once or twice every couple of months, I'm at home all the time. So my schedule is completely up to me. And I work with so many people that are not in the United States that our time zones are always having to change. Like, basically, what time do I have to do this meeting in the morning or this time in the afternoon? So it, it's actually made me realize that I can have a lot more control over what my day looks like because... A lot of people that I work with that are here in this part of the world, I have to do, I, I make sure to do my meetings with them like, like seven o'clock my time so that I'm not making them stay up till six, seven at night because we're not the default. The United States is not the default. We shouldn't be the one everyone's building their time around. So I try to make sure I get all these things done first thing in the morning. But for me, by nine or 10 in the morning, most of my meetings are done. I'm like, okay, well, it's done. I have time to work and get the stuff done I want, but I also have time to go take a walk. I can finish a meeting and go take a walk before I come, come back and you know, hammer my, fa my fingers on the keyboard for a little bit. So it, I think it really does help us be more productive in general. Um, I, I'm using the term, the word productive here. This actually is a very problematic word for me. I, I'm going to use it here, but it, I don't like it. Um, but it does let you, I think this whole mindset shift does let you be more productive in the work you're trying to get done um, and accommodate for the things you want to do. For me, taking 15, 20 minutes to go out in the garage and just get something done with my sewing project. Or I'm building a table for my wife in our master bedroom. She wanted a table under it. So I've, I've been designing a table and I'm out there working on the designs and getting things cut and all that type of stuff. Gives me a few minutes to just go, let, let me just go do this thing for 15, 20 minutes. Because when I come back to work and I have to do something, it actually opens my mind to like new ideas I wasn't thinking about before. It gives me a chance to like not be so focused on this screen right here for 15 minutes that when I come back and go, oh, I actually, that problem I was trying to solve becomes a little bit more clear to me now because I've got myself some time and distance from whatever it was. And then I think, personally, I think overall, it's a huge, it's a huge benefit to our mental health. Um, I'm pretty open about this. I started taking medication last year for anxiety. I have very severe anxiety, um, and it comes with, if anyone has been around this stuff, it comes with depression. They're like, they go hand in hand. If you, have, if you have anxiety, you're likely to have some form of depression. Not on any medication for the depression, thankfully, and it doesn't cause me much problems, but I have pretty severe anxiety. And some days it makes it really tough to get up and actually do anything at all. Or even halfway through my day, I will have panic attacks and I have to go sit down in the house and like I find myself just crying on the couch. No reason, just everything becomes overwhelming. So I find I have to really work at this and it's, it's actually become a really big help because it gives me a chance to realize, no, I need to step away. I, I have to go take a walk because I'm gonna get triggered. Something's gonna trigger me, it's gonna make this day really rough. I need to walk away. Now, not everybody, you don't have to have those sorts of mental challenge, mental health issues. 
to incorporate this. I think it can work really well for everyone. It happens to just be more obvious for someone like me because if I don't do it, there's a very bright line between you know, when I'm in a good place and I'm not in a good place. But I think everybody can benefit from that because we don't always see it as I'm triggered into like a panic attack. It's just, I just need a break. I feel exhausted. I need to walk away. This can really help so you don't get to that point. You can kind of make that day feel like more like a rhythm. More, it flows. You're going to have high notes. You're going to have low notes. But by the end of the day, it all kind of flowed out. It all kind of worked. OK, so how do we do it? Because I talked a lot about why you should do this. Obviously, I should tell you some things you probably can do, or I think you can do. Um, this, I think, is the most important thing. And I think there should actually be multiple, not just one. Create no work zones in your house. I, when I'm, this is how I do it, or one way that I do it. So I told you, I have a shed, literally a shed in my backyard I go to. When I'm done, when I need to work, I do not take this laptop into the house with me. I leave it docked in my shed. I go out of the shed, I close the door, and I walk the 25 feet into the sliding glass door of my, I don't walk into the door, I walk through the door. Um, I go into the house to the kitchen. But I don't bring the laptop with me. I never take the laptop with me. I always, I'm going to work in my shed, and I do other things in my home. What was that? Um, to me, that is hugely important. Um, now, I recognize, I also have a three-bedroom house. I live in a home, or I live in a single-family residence. Not everybody does. Many, many, many people don't live in a house. They live in an apartment or a condo or other spaces. Live with roommates. So you can't just always, I'm just going to walk away and go to my other space in the house. I know that's not a real thing for everyone. So I wanted to word this as a no work zone as in one key thing is don't work in your bed. I, I can't stress that enough. Do not work from your bed. The place that you sleep and that should be the resting area for you every day should never be the place that you do work. Because in your brain literally, there's been plenty of research on this, your brain literally draws connections and at that point that that's an okay place for this to happen and it stops drawing a connection that that's my resting space. Because your brain at night needs to be able to tone down and actually go to sleep. It takes cues to actually start turning yourself, getting ready for bed. And if it doesn't have those because you're so used to working in that, it becomes really difficult to sleep well. Um, I know this because I've been looking into the research and reading some papers about it. And it is a, my, my therapist actually told me it's a very real thing. It will mess up your sleep. And that messes up your entire life. So create a no-work zone. But I will tell you specifically, do not work from your bed. Don't do it. It's bad. Just slap your hand. Don't do it. Um, set times a day that you want to stop working and dedicate to you. Now, when I say this, I don't mean at 5 o'clock every day, that's when I'm done work. That's not what I mean. Yes, you should have a time where at the end of the day you take a break. But what I mean is create specific times, multiple times in a given day where you're like, this is the time where I walk away and I don't. Uh, one, of my, one of the people on my team, her name is Denise. She's one of the advocates here. Um, I think she's actually recording some stuff in our media zone. She loves, her and her husband love to work out. Like, they're fitness people. They take very good care of themselves. They make a point every day at like 10 a.m. She's like, I, don't, I will never accept a meeting from you at 10 a.m. I go to the gym with my husband and we work out. It's time for them to spend time together and they work out. She's told me this. Okay. I don't, I don't care. I'm like, that's your life. Go do your life thing. Of course. But she made a point. She says, no, no, this is really important to me. I'm going to make that time every day a sacred time that I do a thing for myself because I need to. This is what I mean. Pick times every single day that makes sense for you to go do something that isn't work related. Anything. Read a book for a couple minutes. Don't do anything. I mean, if you're me, kind of doom scroll on TikTok for about 20 minutes and look at Star Wars stuff, because again, I do Star Wars stuff, but whatever it is, just do something for a few minutes that isn't work related. That is hugely important and that whatever times makes sense for you. I tend to stop working every day uh, for the first time at like 11 a.m. and then again at 4 p.m. Pacific because I pick, my son up, I pick my son up from school every single day at 4.30. But then I go, but I kind of work again around six or seven. When my, I get him home, we do some stuff. My wife feeds him dinner. Um, he actually has a, my son has to have a feeding tube. Like he still eats, but he has to have a feeding tube because he's got a medical condition. And so that's a, it's a whole thing. So when she feeds him, it's like an hour long process. And I'm great. I go back out to the shed and I work for about an hour. Like I turn off for like an hour to do stuff with my son, hang out with him. And then once she's feeding him, I go back out and work for a little bit where I can put my brain disconnect and then come back to it for a little bit. That happens to work for me, and it's turned out to be really, really good because she's spending time with him there. I get to do this, and then when she's done, I come back in the house, and we go back to family time again. What works for you is going to be different, but that, I think, is really, really important. Take short breaks. I think this, we all know this. I think all of us have been trying to do this for our entire lives, whether you're in an office or not. You have to take short breaks. If you don't, and by short breaks, a break can be four minutes. 
Just something that is not you sitting at a desk and typing on a keyboard and staring at a screen. And doesn't matter what it is. Just go do something that isn't that for two minutes, for four minutes, 15, whatever works for you, and have multiple of those throughout the day. It is hard. I know that. Me saying this to you is not like, cool, I'm going to go do that right now. It's great. I know that. Because I don't do it most days. But I think it's really, really important that we do that. A couple more. <laughs> I think this should be obvious. I know it's not, because I don't do it very consistently either. Like I said at the beginning, this is kind of therapy for me, because i got to remind myself that these things are important. So I'm telling you more to talk to myself. Um, you're welcome. But you have to, start, you have to set goals. And when back in the early part of the presentation, what I was mentioning about um, looking at things over like a week or three weeks or a month, that's what I mean by goals. I don't mean, this is what I'm going to get done tomorrow. That's a task. Think to yourself, what is a thing I want to make sure is accomplished for myself when this month is over? Whatever it is. And then from there, back yourself into, what are the things I have to do? So I've mentioned once or twice about working out. In the States, I don't know why we're really obsessed with working out, probably because we're not good at doing it very often and taking very good care of ourselves. And one of the things I've talked to people about is like, how do I get myself to the gym? How do I go, how do I make sure I'm going to do that walk or that, that mountain biking or whatever the thing is you want to do? And my question, they're like, because it feels so hard. I gotta, I gotta get up, I gotta do all these things and get out the house. And I'm like, well, what's the first thing that you have to do? What do you mean? And they give me answers. I'm like, no, you're sitting at a desk on your computer, right? What's the first thing you have to do? You have to stand up. And then you have to take a couple steps to get to your door to go through the next room. You, that's what we have to do when I say plan and set realistic goals. We have to say, this is where I want to be. Literally, what are all the little things I need to do to get there? But don't think about all the little things. Think about what is the first thing that I have to do? And then literally, what is the next thing that I have to do? Because when we break it down into small chunks, it becomes less complicated. Here in the DevNet zone, most everyone's talking about automation. You know, automating technology, using the Ansible, using Terraform. Uh, Quinn's over here talking about console Terraform sync. Like, all these things about how to automate problems and simplify problems in our work lives. We should be doing that in our personal lives, too. In our real life, not our personal life, our real life. Work is just work. Our real life is this. How do you automate your real, world, your real life? The way you automate it is by saying, what are all the little things I need to get done? And how, then how do I automate those? What are some things I can do for myself to make that simpler? We have to set those goals. You have to say, this is where I want to get to. These are all the things. How do I start with the first one? Then how do I go to the second one? And worry about that rather than saying, I've got to plan everything out. I've got to detail. I just... One step at a time. It's always one step at a time. In automation, we know this. If you're looking at, I want a full CI CD pipeline for my, you know, for my network. One of my uh, teammates, Adrian, has a whole blog series. I have it in my other deck. A whole blog series on um, using GitLab to automate your campus network. Like, not just classic developer stuff, but like literally, how do I automate changes and things in my campus network, which is not something we typically think about. And it's really nice. It's really fantastic. But when you look over it, you have to know all the little steps, and sometimes it gets too complicated. You think about, I want to do that. I want to automate all of my campus network. But then you run into one problem. You're like, ah, crap, how do I get there? What do, how do I get past this problem? You're going to run into that. We have to just take this one step at a time. How many people, when they write their tasks for the day, it, show of hands, how many people, when you write your tasks for the day, do you just write down the work tasks? Or do you like, include all the personal stuff, too? Show of hands, do you just write down work tasks? You know what? I'm not trying to call you out. <laughs> I won't call anybody out. I'm just saying. Because that's what, I know that's what I do. If I pulled up a sauna right now and I tried using a sauna for a bit, that was dumb for life and, life and work. It's our work tool, which was a bad idea. I was trying to blend work and life together. So I started writing my note, my tasks down for the day. Here's all the things I had to do. And my wife came out and she laughed at me one day. She's like, have you looked at your, like, because I was, was complaining that, like, oh, I don't have time to go take a walk. She's like, look at your task list. I'm like, what do you mean? She goes, there's nothing on there that says go take a walk. It was just all these things I had to reply back to. She's like, you didn't write. Why didn't you just write that? Just go take a walk. Eat lunch. I'm like, I don't know. She's like, I think that's your first problem. Like, you're not actually telling yourself to go do the thing that's important to you. When you write down, if you write down your task, however you do it, it's work and it's your life. Write all of them down. It's not just the work that you do every day. You are still alive. This isn't, what is that TV show? Um, oh, what is it called? Uh, it's where people can go to work and you can choose to like forget about your, no. Okay. You can choose, basically people can choose to forget about their, that they have a real life outside of work. I forget what the TV show is, it's like, I think it's called Severance. People go to work and they can choose to like, hey, all my personal life is gone, I just, I just have work. That's not real. Like we, nobody goes to work and just like, I'm not a real person anymore, I'm just a work person. And I, at the end of the day, I become a real person again. That's not real. We have a real life every day, all day long. We should be 
prioritizing that, like making tasks for all the things you have to do. Yes, connect with people. Whether it's loved ones, friends, however you, however you view this, human connection is hugely important. We're all getting that here. I'm getting to see people that I never get to see in person, uh, either because they're in different countries, we're in different states, we don't fly together, we're not like in offices regularly, so most of the people that are here that, I'm working, that I work with, I never get to see in person, unless I'm at Cisco Live here or in the United States. Connect with people. Human connection, we, we are, we are relationship-driven creatures. Humans need relationships. We need connection to other people. It's different how you ever you want to approach it, but we need this. We absolutely have to have this. You have to be intentional about this, too. This does not happen by happenstance. You just stumble into hanging out with friends. If you don't plan it and plan for what you want out of it, it will never be successful for you. That's important. Okay, this is what I mentioned, and we've got about 15 minutes left. I want to leave any time if there's time for questions or what, however we want to do that. But this is the thing I've mentioned a few different times. Look at your whole month. Look at an entire calendar, whether it's a month for you or a week. However, however you're able to build that rhythm, it's totally up to you. I try to do a month. I'm not always good at it, but I do try to do a month. If it, a week is better for you, that's fine. You just have to pick that thing that makes sense for you. Build this out. So, like I said, consider your month or week as a whole thing, not day to day. Get a, try to get a better sense of the big picture. What is it you want that month to have looked like? For me, like I said, I want to finish my Star Wars cosplay. I love Star Wars. I've mentioned that. I want that to be done so that it's not so much that I can make whatever event it is. I just want to feel like I did a thing. I finished it. I made this thing by hand, and I'm done. Like That's what I want the end of the month to look at. How can I find time every day or make time every day, five minutes, to go do something that I need to do to complete that? You need a bigger, you need that bigger sense of the, uh, sorry, you need the better sense of the big picture. Know what you want to get done, whatever the one thing is, so you can fill the time in to get that thing done. Um, I probably could do a whole presentation on this last one, but identifying patterns and trends in your work and personal commitments. What I mean by this is, where are you, if you're trying to help yourself, where are you noticing times when, or places when, like I mentioned earlier, I don't just get up and go take a walk because, well, I, got, I heard the ding from you know, my WebEx chat or whatever, and I'm like, let me just get that. Hang on a second. I'm just going to get that real quick. Of course, that, we were all thinking that, that real quick turned around. Oh, crap, it's been two hours because I just got 30 others and I did that. Of course, that's exactly what it looks like. So how can I step back and say, let me think differently about that. For me, I turned off all notifications in chat, Slack, Discord, WebEx for us, and Cisco. I turned all of that notifications off. The only way that I get notifications that someone messaged me is by actually opening the app and looking at it. So now the next thing I have to practice is stop opening the app. <laughs> if I want to go take a walk, I don't need that thing up on my screen all the time. I don't need Outlook up on my, my two monitors in my shed. I don't need Outlook and chat up on the screen at all times because I'm not just respond. my job is not to respond to emails, it's to do things. So I keep those things minimized. And then it becomes much more obvious for me when there's a natural breaking point to go, oh, I'm kind of tired. And I look at my screens and there's no chat, there's no one asking for my time because oh, it's not on the screen, I feel better about saying, oh, cool, I can just get up and go take a walk. No worries, no one's asking for me. But when I keep those things up on the screen, that's when the problems happen. So for me, the trend was, or the pattern was, I'm looking at messaging too much and like waiting for someone to message me. Like, no, no, I've got to be available to respond. That was a negative pattern for me. I am like, okay, I need to, how do I practice not doing that? And the first thing was turn off notifications and just shut the apps down. I don't need them open all day long. I go look at them when I need them. That was something that helped me a lot. You'll have to find the thing that makes sense for you. Being respectful. What I mean by this, and I'm going to get this into the next one, being respectful of your personal time and space. When I say respectful, you have to be respectful of yourself. I mentioned earlier, don't work from your bed. I'm going to say it again, don't work for your bed. It's bad. Don't do that. It's never a good thing. You've got to respect your own personal space and time. Having the no work zone in your house is a really good idea. Um, interesting story. One of my peers, um, his name is Ryan Rose. He did a theater session, I think, yesterday or the day before. He and I talk all day. We actually... Star Wars. We do a live stream on YouTube every Friday afternoon where we just talk about Star Wars for an hour. It's called the Kessel Chat. It's a lot of fun. But we did it in the pandemic because he lives like an hour away from me, but we couldn't hang out because we're in the middle of the pandemic. So the way we decided to hang out is, I don't know, let's start a live stream and we'll talk about Star Wars for an hour. So two friends just get to hang out for an hour at least every single week. We were getting on one of our shows and we're getting started. And he was like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm getting everything ready. He's like, dude, I was actually really thinking about buying a uh, uh, a couch. My wife had suggested buying a couch for my office so that when I'm taking a break, I can just get up and go sit on the couch. She goes, and she actually was looking at like an espresso machine because he loves drinking coffee. He's like, I'm going to get the machine in here. As we were talking, he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not. He's like, Jeff and I decided not to do any of that. I'm like, why? He's like, because I realized I'm never going to leave my office. He has five kids. He's like, I just gonna, I'm going to put stuff in my office 
to make, make it so I'm comfortable never actually having to get out of my office and go do anything else. I'm just, I get up and I take my breaks in my workspace. I get my coffee in my workspace in his own home. He's like, I'm forcing myself to have an office, like a work office someplace else in the home that I'm never going to leave during the day. When my, when my twin, his twin four-year-olds are running around, he's like, that's terrible. Why? No, I, wanna, I don't want to be in here all day long. So when I say respect your personal time and space, I mean literally like the no work zone. Don't make your office space or the corner in your, you know, your room, if you have roommates in a flat, like that's your office, that's your work area, that's your work zone. Everything else should be about your own life. And you have to respect it because it's you. It's your own personal life. Communicate with coworkers and family members. Be very, very intentional about when you're going to be online and when you're not. And by online, I don't mean I'm in front of a computer. I mean I am online as in I am available to talk to you about work things. Be very clear to people, your family, your coworkers, I'm not available at this time to talk with you. I'm never going to be available at this time every day to talk with you or every week because it doesn't matter why. I don't need to tell you why I'm not available. I'm just telling you, you can reach out to me at 10 a.m. every day. Denise, I just won't simply be here. And you're not going to get a response from me until I'm back from the thing. It's like, you're welcome to ping me. I'm just not ever going to be here at this time. Okay. Like, you have, to, you have to be intentional and communicate with people because if you don't, then they're just going to keep pinging because their priorities in their life, in your life, are not the mine and vice versa. If you don't tell me what they are, then we can't figure that out. When, speaking of anxiety, when, I feel, when, I feel, when I know, I'm starting to learn the trigger points for me when I, my anxiety, my actual anxiety triggers and like spurs up and I could have a panic attack or what have you, not everybody has it manifest in the same way as me. Um, but you have to start looking, being, again, intentional about what are the things every day that trigger you? What are the things that make you stressed out and frustrated so that you can practice? One of my coaches told me, these things are always a practice. You're never going to be good at them. I'm now just good at a thing. No, it is always a practice. You're just practicing. How can you practice becoming better at the thing that you want to, whatever you're assessing that triggers you, how can I practice doing things that help me with that? It's always about practice. And then, of course, prioritizing self-care and rest. Self-care being literally anything. For me, it's sewing or building a table in, this, in my, you know, my wood shop. For you, it's whatever it happens to be. Exercise, sleep, reading a book. It doesn't matter what it is, but you need to prioritize it, and you have to speak up for yourself. And by speak up for yourself, yes to other people, but more importantly to yourself. This is something that is important to me. I'm going to take a break every day to read the new Brandon Sanderson novel that came out and spend 15 minutes on it because I, I want to do this. I, it's a thing I really want. I'm going to go sit up. Sorry, I don't know what's happening. I swear I'm not touching this. So that's important. You have to, you have to prioritize that time for yourself because if you don't, no one else is going to do it for you. All right, final takeaways. This is the last slide, and then any questions you might, and I'll stop talking, and any questions you have, I'm happy to answer. The only way that you're going to get to this, and again, I use the word balance here. I probably shouldn't have done that, but the only way you're going to get to that point where you feel healthy, whatever your definition of healthy is, is by creating a rhythm for yourself looking at your life and saying, what, what do I want to get done in a period of time, not every single day, and how do I do that? How do I back myself into that? Because the rhythm is what's important. Um, and I mentioned the word earlier, productivity. I'll just tease something else I like to talk about. I think productivity is a fallacy. Like, nobody is productive. The word productive comes from a root of pr produce, literally produce. It comes from, a, the word comes from people who farm and pr produce produce to deliver someplace. And it has been turned into something that we talk about at work. We... Productivity, I think, is completely complete nonsense. We shouldn't be focusing on how productive you can be every day. What you focus on is, am I getting the things done that I wanted to get done? That's not productive as in filling every minute of the day. Did I do the four things that I needed to get done today that were important to me, my pers personally and for work? If I did, f feel really good about the day at that point. Great. Don't think of, stop thinking about, yeah, but there was 10 minutes that like, I could have responded to two more things. Yeah, probably. Or you could have taken a nap. I don't know, what's more important to you? Like, being productive in our time, we always think about that for work. We don't think about how productive we might want to be for our own lives. So try to take the word productive and put it out of your mind. Like, did I get the things done today that gets me where I want to be in a week and in two weeks? If I did, fantastic. If I didn't, then that's where to put, then that's where to put your brain. Okay, it doesn't like my PowerPoint, so I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Listening to me wax poetic for an hour first thing in the morning. <laughs> any, any questions I can answer for anybody? Awesome. Well, thanks, everyone. I appreciate it.